No one might never preach, might just sing the message. Hallelujah. Some of them older songs were written from the depths of men's hearts, anointed yes. by the Spirit of God. Not, yes, that, not that some of today's aren't, but right. when you go to reading some of those old hymnals, they just do something to me. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Power. Powerful. When you read the life experiences that they came out of. Right. Amen. My, my, my. Last week, <laughs> we talked about arriving at our wit's end. Right. And we talked about the faith that it took to then realize that we have came to the end of our understanding, yeah. to the end of our knowledge, to the end of our carnal way of thinking. Yes. And we talked about how that God is not bound by logic. Mm -hmm. He is not bound by carnal understanding or carnal wisdom. He is God. Right. In this plane in which we live, right. there are laws of nature that we as human beings are bound by. God is not bound by the laws of nature. Amen. He is the one that set the laws of nature in place. Amen. Gravity holds us down. Gravity affects God in no way whatsoever. Amen. The laws of physics, the laws of nature, man's logical way of thinking, none of those things affect God. None of those things box God in. God is not bound by or subject to the things that we are in this life. All right. There is another realm besides the natural realm in which we live. There is a spiritual realm right. in which these laws have no authority. Absolutely. The law of gravity, the law, and there's a lot of them, but and the 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 uh, our way of thinking, right. all the different things that we have that we are ruled by in this life, the law, the spiritual realm is not regulated by those things. There is a law in the spiritual realm. More than one, but the law in the spiritual realm I want to talk about this morning is the law of faith. When we come to our end of being able to understand, then we can really understand in part what faith really is. The Bible says four times that the just shall live by faith. That lets me know this morning, Brother Dave, Yes. That if the just shall live by faith, we will die without it. Amen? Come on. You will not make it, Brother Rodney, without faith. Come on. Amen? Come on. Now, I know sometimes we feel like that we've got... Sometimes our faith seems greater. Yeah. Sometimes our faith don't seem as great. Right. Sometimes it seems like we're weak in our faith. Sometimes it feels like we're stronger in our faith. Right. You will not make it without faith. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that for we walk by faith, faith. and not by, by sight. sight. That tells me, on the other side of the equation, if we walk by faith, then if we do not have faith, then we will fall. Right. Amen? We will not be able to walk the walk that is set before us. True. We must have faith to live by. We must have faith to walk by. We must not constrict our way of thinking and ourself to being logical today, to the Amen. place to where that it binds our faith in God. That just because we can't see a way out, there is no way out. No. There's always a way out because God always makes a way of escape. Amen? Amen. Just because we can't see the answer, that doesn't mean there's not an answer. That just means our carnal thoughts and our carnal mind cannot perceive what the answer might be because we find ourselves <coughs> hindered, right. subject to, boxed in, if you will, by our own carnal logic trying to figure things out. Amen. The reason many scientists will not accept the fact that there is a God is because they cannot explain God. Come on. Amen? True. Most atheists, if you brought it down to where the rubber met the road, if they're really an atheist, the reason they are is because it just makes no sense that there's a God. Come on. Amen? It doesn't have to make sense to us. True. He is not subject to the laws of nature. Amen. He is not subject to our understanding. Amen. His ways, as we read last Sunday morning, are above our ways. Yes. His thoughts are above our thoughts. Oh. Our knowledge, no matter how smart you are, right. no matter how educated you are, our knowledge is limited. God's is not. Amen. God's knowledge is endless. Amen? Right. He is God. In the beginning, somebody said, well, where did God come from? Always has been. Yes. Always will be. True. In the beginning, God. But see, man, 
tries to figure out, well, if God was there in the beginning, how, how did He come to be? He didn't come to be. Man always thinks there has to be a beginning, a starting place. Right. There doesn't have to be a beginning and a starting place in God. He always has been. I know we can't understand that this morning, but He always has been. Amen? Amen. Man is limited in his way of thinking about power. We think about on the on the, the, the scale of military. We think about, well, this nation has this much power. And this country has this much power. Oh. Or this man, when we think about it being in office, he has this much power. His power is limited. God's power is not limited today. Amen? Amen. Our carnal mind limits power. God is not limited today. He is all powerful. He is almighty. He is God. And besides Him, there is no other. He was not only there in the beginning, He always has been. He always will be. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But even just the very words that comes out of His mouth shall not pass away. Amen. Amen. True. God always has been. Right. Always will be. Right. Jesus would say with men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. You see, faith is God's way. I know we don't understand it. I know that we, we can't explain it. But that's the way God has set this thing up. <laughs> without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Right. It's impossible to come to God, Brother Sleeves, without faith. He said those that come to Him must come to Him, must believe that He is. Those that come to Him must believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. So we have to have faith today. So God has a law in His spiritual realm. And that law is the law of faith. Romans 3 and 27 says this. Where is boasting then? Yeah. It is excluded. By what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. You see, realizing that God is not bound by the law of logic or the laws of nature, <laughs> when we come to the end of our understanding, then, we can really understand to a point anyway as much as our old carnal mind can. Come on. Really when you think about it, the only way you can understand God is to come to the realization that you cannot understand God. Right. Amen? Absolutely. Then you can realize how He works. Come on. He's not bound by this plane that we see. He's not bound by the laws of nature in which we are bound by. He is not bound by our logic or our carnal understanding or our reasoning. Amen? Right. He is God. Yes. He created those things. He is not bound. The Creator is not bound by the creation. Amen? Oh, he is not bound by the things that He has created. There is a way that this life is set Amen. up. We have to have gravity. Right. If not, we'd all just be floating around. Amen. Everything just be floating around. Right. We have to have those things. God does not. Right. Amen? God does not work that way. Amen. So the things that seem impossible with man, the things that are impossible with man, are not impossible with God. Amen? He's not bound by physics. He's not bound by gravity. He's not bound by the other laws of nature. He is, he is the God in which all things are possible. Yeah. He is God. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. Come on. And I know we want to understand. Yes. But we can't. Yes. Not with our old carnal mind. Through the eye of faith we can. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And as I tried to find other notes by other ministers on this subject, you really realize just how dumbed down the church has become when you go trying to get some feedback or opinions on subjects, right. biblical things, from other ministries. Now, I'm not saying there's not other ministries out there, but I'm telling you they're not as easy to find as you would think. Amen. When you start looking up faith, you know what you find 85% of the time? Name it and claim it. Right. Grab it and nab it. Amen? Right. Yeah. The word of faith. When you start, and the word, listen to me, the word of faith, the way that it is defined today by the modern day church is not right. Come on. You are not God. You do not have the power to create like God. Amen? Right. God is not bound by the things that you are bound by. Come on. Amen? Amen? Turn with me this morning to 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. I'm going to talk about Elisha and some other prophets here for just a minute or two. 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. We're going to start in the first verse. 
2 Kings 6 and 1, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, there there's the Jordan River, they cut down wood. Now they're out there chopping wood. But as one was felling a beam, in other words, while he was chopping, the axe head fell into the water. How many people ever been cutting wood or chopping wood and the axe head fell off? Amen. We used to have an old axe head that we busted, we, an axe that we busted wood with, and sometimes the head would fall off of that thing. Right. That's what happens here. True. They're out there chopping wood and the axe head falls off. But it don't just fall off. The Bible says it fell into the water. That fell into the Jordan River. Amen. And the man was doing the chopping cried and said, Alas, Master, for it was borrowed. This wasn't even his. He borrowed it. How many times you anybody ever borrowed something from somebody and it broke? Well, you had it. <laughs> That's why I don't like to borrow stuff from people. Right. People have, have often they say you can you can use my rider ride and lawnmower, but uh -huh. I don't know the first time I do it blow up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So I don't like to borrow stuff from people. Amen. He borrowed this axe, and while he's using it, the head flies off. Right. Now in today's society, people borrow stuff from you and you never see it again. Amen. But in their society, it meant something to your integrity. That if you borrowed it, you was going to bring it back. Amen? That's why you might think, well, what was the big deal? Couldn't they just come up with another axe head? Couldn't they scrape up? They was probably didn't have much money. They was, they was preachers, so they probably broke. But but they, they probably didn't have the money to buy one, but maybe they could have scraped up some or found one from somewhere. Maybe somebody had an extra one somewhere. I don't know. But he was panicked because I told him I'd bring it back. It means something. To give somebody your word. It don't mean nothing today to a lot of people now. He don't mean something to a lot of people. Amen. Used to, Brother Bill Case told me when he wanted to borrow money from the bank, yeah. he went to the bank and he shook hands with the banker. Yeah. Didn't sign no papers. Just shook hands. Said, I'll pay this back. And whatever the payment agreement was, they knew he'd be back to pay it. Praise Today you got to sign 25 papers. Yeah, you can. Amen. Right. Seemed like you're signing your life away. Right. But he had given somebody his word, so it was it was a big thing to him. Right. It might not mean much to you while you're reading this, but it was a big thing to him. Amen? Amen. It was borrowed. If it had been his, it would have been a loss, but maybe he wouldn't have been quite as upset about it. It wasn't even mine. So there it lays at the bottom, because you know that an axe head will not float. Right. In our natural realm, according to the laws of nature, the axe head is unable to float. True. When it hit the water, it sank to the bottom. True. So this situation looked it looked impossible to get the axe head back. But Elisha knew the God in whom all things are possible. Amen? Amen. And the man of God said in verse 6, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. Listen to what the man of God does. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And what in the world is this prophet? That don't make any sense. The man has lost the axe head. It's sunk to the bottom of the Jordan River. And he's cut down this little tree. And he threw the tree into the water. What in the world is that? Well, how's that going to help anything? The Bible says when he threw it in there, the iron did swim. That don't make no sense. That's all right, you don't have to. Amen. Man will read this and they'll try to, well, it must be, must just be a figurative story. It just must be an allegorical thing. They must just be, you know, it's a made up thing. That's why smart men refuse to believe Jonah the whale. Right. And that God created the earth in six days. Amen. And the great flood. All right. And creation only because God spoke it into being. They refuse it because they can't understand it. They can't wrap their mind around it. They don't understand that the Creator is not bound by the creation. Come on. The axe head began to swim. <laughs> All things 
or Paul. Some of you out there today need your axe head to swim. It looks like it's impossible. You're in a situation where it looks like there's no way out. There's no way to fix it. What you had, you lost. Your situation is beyond repair. But we serve a God today in whom all things are possible. Brother Dave, you may look at that wall and think that it's insurmountable. There's no way to get around it. There's no way to get under it. There's no way to get over it. There's no way through this battle that I'm in. But we know a God today who is an expert in taking that which is impossible and making it possible by faith. Praise to us. So He cuts down this tree which represents the cross. All faith has to begin at the cross. Amen. I don't care how much faith you claim to have and how much you believe that God can do, if you don't believe He did that, everything else is in vain. Come on. True. Think about that. Amen. If your faith does not begin at the finished work of the cross, all your other faith is in vain. Come on. It don't matter how much you think the great Allah or the great even the great Jehovah, no matter how much you think that He can do, and how much you believe the miracles of the Old Testament? If you don't believe what took place on the on Mount Calvary on that old rugged cross, all your other faith is in vain today. Amen. He is more than able to do anything that man can't. Right. Amen. True. The axe head, the iron did swim. Right. And the prophet said, "Take it up to thee." Amen. And he put it on. He put it. He put out his hand and he took it. All faith begins with the cross. And if you look close enough, more times than not, in the miracles of the Old Testament, you will see a shadow of that which was to take place on Golgotha's hill just outside of Jerusalem on the day that He gave His life. Because Jesus turned to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and He said, study the Scriptures, read the Scriptures, and then you think you have eternal life? They testify of Me. Read the old book. Read the Old Testament. You'll find me there. Faith. That your iron head, that your axe head, that your iron can swim again. Charles Spurgeon, the great prince of preachers, said this, the axe head seems, seemed hopelessly lost. It seemed there was no hope. It seemed there was no expectation of victory. It seemed there was no way for this to take place. But the iron was made to mount from the depths of the river and to swim. For things impossible with man are possible with God. Amen. We must come to this place to where we realize it doesn't make no sense to me, my natural way of thinking. Right. But that doesn't mean that it's not. That doesn't mean that it's not possible. Because God, with God, all things are possible. Amen. With God, it is possible for an empty meal barrel and an empty cruise of oil in His hands to feed you, your house, and the prophet until the famine is over. With God, it is possible to walk through the midst of a fiery furnace and come out not even smelling like smoke. With God, it is possible to sleep on, an, on a hungry lion all night and not get a scratch. Amen. With God, all things are possible. With God, it is possible to take a little bit of clay in your hands and form a man and breathe, breathe life into his nostrils. With God, all things are possible. He is God. He is all my God, there is nothing that limits His ability. He is the Creator of all. He is God. He is God. There is none like unto Him. If they were here today, you could ask the followers of Dagon if their God was as great as the God that we serve today. Dagon falls down on his face, amen, before the presence of a living God. Dagon falls and his, and his head falls off and nothing but a stump because he is in the presence of a living God, amen. All things bow to him. All things were made by him. One day, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess he is God Almighty he is Jesus Christ the Lord to the glory of the Father amen he is God and besides him there is no other he is not bound by our reasoning he is not bound by our thinking he is not bound by the physical realm all things can be done by his power he is God he is God 
The earth was without form and void. Right. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Come on. Come on, tell But God it. spoke. Yes. And the iron did swim. Fire. Moses stands at the Red Sea with Pharaoh behind him and a wall and a mountain on each side and a whole bunch of angry, murmuring, complaining people. Come on. Stand still. It's impossible. Man's what there ain't no way, but at least they didn't have enough material to build no boats. They didn't have it. There wasn't no bridge to cross over. Hey. Maybe we can find a way out of this. See, that's why the children of Israel were complaining and murmuring because they had thought there ain't no way out. Right. We're doomed. How many times have you thought that? Hey, I'm doomed. Yeah. I ain't gonna make it. Right. Ain't no way out of this. Wits in. <laughs> Came to you wits in, amen. Come on, preach. Moses. According to the commandment of the Lord, stretches his rod out over the Red Sea. Yep. And the iron did swim. Come on. God made a way where there seemed to be no, no way. Amen. Thank oh, you, Jesus. That which seemed impossible with God. Yes. That which seemed impossible with man. That which seemed impossible with man. The God of all things are possible caused it to come to pass. Amen. Faith in Him and His power. Faith that He is not bound by logic or understanding or the laws of nature. Right. We are. He ain't. Amen. Amen. True. That's a good grammar. We are. He ain't. Amen. Faith, listen to this. Faith that goes a step beyond that, Brother Spencer said, faith that He will, faith that He can, but faith that if He don't, it wasn't because He wasn't able. Come on. Think about that. Yeah. Faith that He can. Right. Faith that He will. Right. But faith that if He don't, it wasn't because He wasn't able. Come on. It was because He He has a different way than what we planned. Amen. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. How many times have we looked at a situation and we thought, oh, I know exactly how it's going to work out. Yeah. I've been this this door's going to open, and this, but that door never opens. And we're like, what? I thought for sure this was the answer. I thought for sure this was the way. Not God's way. Not God's answer. Amen. Amen. True. Faith that goes beyond just believing that He can and that He will. Faith in believing that if He don't, it ain't because He ain't able. Faith that realizes that His thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so is His ways higher than our ways and His yes. thoughts higher than our thoughts. Faith that goes beyond the fact that He is able, that He will, but stands true when He don't. Sometimes we act like little babies. If we don't get our way, we get mad and we pout. Well, I don't understand why God. Why ain't God? Why didn't God? Why did God? Because He knows better than we do. Because He knows better than we do. I've been walking with the Lord for a long, long time. <clears throat> More times than not, I didn't get the answer I thought I was going to get. I know that flies in the face of the name it and claim it. Good balls. Amen. Mom. But His ways are higher than my ways. Amen. His thoughts. There are things that I have faced, there are things that I've went through that I didn't want. I don't understand it. Man. I don't know why it happened. Right. Brother Dave, there are times that I look around right. and I see ministries that are flourishing right. financially. Amen. And I know biblically they are not preaching the truth. Amen. That's right. And I know that to the best of my ability, I stay with the book. Yes. True. And we struggle. I don't understand that. But His ways are above my ways. Amen. His thoughts are above my thoughts. Yes. True. I don't understand why we don't have to set out chairs. I don't understand why we haven't had to look for a different building because this one just ain't big enough. Right. I don't understand how people can draw a crowd <clears throat> that are not preaching the truth. Amen. Not with my own carnal way of understanding. Of course, I know that's what the Bible says is going to happen. Right. 
But his ways are above my ways. His thoughts. Are above, I, I, there have been times that I thought, God, what am I doing? Wrong. Wrong. I, what? His ways are above my ways. His thoughts are above my thoughts. Amen? Amen. And there's more to church growth than how many people you have in the pew. Absolutely. Amen? True. It's very true. Just because you're drawing the crowd don't mean you're doing it with the right thing. Right. Exactly. The three Hebrew children, and I know we've heard this before, but we don't. We haven't got it. If we've got it, we'd act a little different. The three Hebrew children stand before the leader of that day, and he says, "Listen. At the time that you hear the music start playing, and he names off a whole list of instruments. At the time you hear that, if you bow down, it'd be all right for you. I want you to worship me. But if you don't, I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace." Mom. Then he asks this question. Who is that God that will deliver you? <laughs> Who is that God that will deliver you out of my hands? I'll tell you who that God is. The God that is not bound by the king's logic. The God that is not bound by the king's understanding. The God that is not subject to the flames that the king's going to throw the three Hebrew children into. I love that statement because I wish I'd be able, I wish I was there to have answered it. Of course, they answered it better than I could. But I would have liked to have said, who is that God? I'm glad you asked me. I'd have preached for about three hours. The God that spoke to Moses from the burning bush, that's who this God is. The God that delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of Pharaoh, that's who this God is. The God that said, let there be light when there was nothing but darkness and light came forth, that's who this God is. Amen. The three Hebrew children that reached their wits in, though, their understanding, they had got to the place where not only did they believe God could, not only did they believe that He would, but they believed that if He didn't, He's got his reasons and I'm still going to hold on to him. Amen? Amen. He can. He will. But if he don't, we still won't bow down because he's still God yeah. regardless. He may not answer the prayer the way I want it answered. He may not answer it when I want it answered or as fast as I would like to get it. Amen? But he's still God. Right. He's still God. Amen. I don't understand it, Brother Billy. I don't either. But it's a good thing to realize you don't understand it. Yes. It's a good thing to get to your wit's end. To where you can't figure things out. To your back is against the wall. And then you realize, God, you're my only hope. And I know that with you all things are possible. They take the three Hebrew children, they throw them in there, and y'all know the rest of it. Amen. <laughs> the king looks in. Said, so did not we throw three men in there? I see four of them. Yeah. The fourth was the God that's not bound by the laws of nature. Amen. The fourth is the one who is not bound by man's way of thinking. Right. Putting our impossibilities into the hands of the one in whom all things are possible. And having enough faith to accept whatever he decides. I want you to listen to that. Whatever he is his will, regardless. He is still God. Yes. He is still God. Amen. Give Him your empty barrel today. In essence, that's what the widow woman did. She gave God Come on. her empty barrel. Yes, sir. Her cruise of oil. Amen. It's empty when she gave it to Him. Read it. She said, I only have a little bit. I have a handful. The prophet said, make me some first. She only had enough to make for the prophet. Right. She only had a handful and a little bit of all. Mm -hmm. So really when she hands over her last, when she comes to the end of her understanding, she has tried to borrow. She has tried to buy with what little piddly thing she had. Right. It, wasn't that, it wasn't so much that she couldn't scrape up enough money to buy some flour. It just wasn't none. Amen. Because there was a famine. There was no meal. 
There was no oil to be had. The barrel was empty. The cruise of oil was empty. But when she put it into their hands, and it was impossible with man. It wasn't enough to sustain her and her son, let alone give the prophet some first. It was impossible with man. But when she put it into the hands of the God through whom all things are possible, He used her empty barrel. He used her empty cruise of oil. Amen. Amen. Your situation today is hopeless in your hands. But not in God's. Amen. With God, there is always hope. Always. There is always hope. Yes. There is no hopeless situation in God. There is in our the way we look at things and the way we think of things, we just think, well, there's no hope left. Oh yeah. <laughs> there is hope. Yes. As long as there is God, and He always has been, always will be, there is hope. Amen. When we come to the place to where we understand. And we can't understand. That's when we really begin to understand. Say, Brother Billy, it makes no sense. I know it don't. That's why God used it. He said He chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Amen. Faith is God's way. Faith is God's law. Give Him your empty barrel and your cruel and your cruise of oil. Give Him your few fishes and loaves. Amen. John the sixth chapter. Go with me there, and I'm going to close with this this morning. I think. John the 6th chapter. John the 6th chapter, we find the disciples trying to figure something out. Trying to make a way. Trying to logically assess the situation and then do something with it. We find in John the 6th chapter, the 3rd verse, and Jesus went up into a mountain. I mean, verse 3, John 6. Jesus went up into a mountain and there He sat with His disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus was lifted up his eyes, then lifted up his eyes, the Bible says, and saw a great company coming to him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And, he, and this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Now Jesus knew already how he was going to make a way. But he wanted to see what Philip and the other disciples' answer would be when he said, "What is? how are we going to do this? How is this going to come to pass? The disciples could have turned to him and said, Lord, I don't understand how we're going to do it. But we know with you, all things are possible. And we're going to see it. We're going to see you move. And we're going to see a great move here today. Amen? Right. They didn't say that. They said, we ain't got enough money. When you look at your bills... And you say, I ain't got enough money. God's got enough. He can make a way. Yes, sir. Amen. He can take your little and make something out of it. He said this to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? See, that's man's logic. Right. Man's yeah. reasoning. True. What is this? This is not enough. Amen? Mm -hmm. There's not enough here for this many people. But Jesus says, Jesus didn't say, well, you're right. There ain't enough. Send them off somewhere. No, Jesus begins to do what Jesus does. Amen? What He still does today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus said, Make the men to sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, and the number of, was about, the Bible says, 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when He had given thanks, and I'm sure there were some people that thought, What is He doing? We better hurry and get to the front of the line because there ain't enough food for all these people. If we wait back here, it's all going to be gone. For, you ever been to a buffet? Or maybe you went to a church potluck. And you went up there and you looked at the table, Brother Dave, and there wasn't very much food. And you thought, I better get up here quick. Amen. Somebody else is going to get it. Right. There ain't enough bread. Yeah. There's only one this little boy's lunch. Come on. He's going to share that with the people in the front. They're the only ones going to get anything. Right. Because in the hands of the lad, it was not enough. In the hands of the disciples, it was not enough. Right. But in the hands of the Master... Oh, it was more. It was more than enough. Right. Jesus took the loaves. When He had given thanks, He distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that sat down. And likewise of the fishes as much as they would. 
When they were filled, you hear that? Amen. When they were filled, He said to His disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost. Right. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Here, Peter, you take this and give it out. So Peter takes it and gives. And that's, surely that's all of it. I've seen that there wasn't but a few fishes and a few loaves. He goes back and Jesus said, Here, Peter, here's you some more. Take that and give it out. And Peter says, There, what? It's, what's, I don't understand this. This is not logical. I know what he started out with in that basket was only enough for this lad's lunch. And we fed 5,000 people. And not only that, now we're gathering up the fragments that are left to, to take 12 basketfuls into town. All right. God's not bound. Amen. God's not limited to, God's not limited by our quantity. Right. <laughs> True. He owns it all. God is not limited by the quantity of what we have. Come on. The widow woman puts her meal bear on her cruise in the hands of the master. Right. And it sustains them. The lad gives his lunch, his two-piece fish and more, to Jesus. Right. Jesus blesses it and breaks it and begins to give it to his disciples to give to the people. Amen? Amen. And he gives until all of them are full. And there's some left over. Because in his hands, it was more than enough. Right. The iron did swim Amen. that day with the 5,000. That which seemed impossible, that was impossible with man, is impossible. Is, it is possible. It is possible with God. That which is impossible with me is possible with Him. Right. God has chosen the way of faith. You will not get there any other way. I've already told you. The Bible says four times the just shall live by faith. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. The Bible says that those that come to Him must believe that He is. And that He is your rewarder of those that diligently seek. The Bible says by grace are we saved through faith. 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 Like the woman with the issue of blood had. Faith. Like the man had that stood there in the crowd and said, Lord, my daughter is dying. And while Jesus is stopped, the woman with the issue of blood has been healed. One of the servants of the man comes and said, don't trouble him no more. Your daughter's dead. You see, the law of death and life does not restrain God. She's dead. Your daughter's dead. Don't bother him anymore. Jesus turns to him and to the ruler and says, Be not afraid. Only believe. Only believe. They get to the house where the daughter is at. And the people are out there moaning and groaning and they're, they're mourning. And Jesus says, Why are you weeping? She's only asleep. And the Bible says that they begin to laugh at Jesus. Men will laugh at you for believing what this book has to say. Amen. Men will laugh at you if you tell them you believe in the six days of creation. You believe in Jonah and the whale. You believe in the Red Sea crossing. You believe that Jesus opened blinded eyes, raised the dead. People will laugh at you for believing the accounts given in this book. They laughed at Jesus. You know what Jesus said? He said, put them all out. Put them all out. He's not bound by the things of this. He's not bound by our way of thinking. They laughed him to scorn. But when he put them all out, he took the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumi, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked. She arose and walked. She was 12 years old. And Jesus said, now give her something to eat. I told you she was just asleep. God is not bound. Amen. God is not bound. Right. He has set up the way of faith. 
for us to come to Him. And that's the way we must come to Him. Yes. That is the way we must walk. We must walk by faith. If you're going to have to try and understand everything and reason everything out and everything has to be logical for you, you ain't going to make it. You're going to find out how real hell is is what you're going to find Amen. out. Because you're going to have to walk by faith. You're going to have to live by faith. You're going to have to realize that just because it makes no sense to our carnal mind does not mean God is, God is bound by that. Amen? I've, I've had people over the years that would say, well, I just can't. I'm trying my best to figure out how God did this. I'm trying to find out if there's a reasonable explanation. Give it up because there ain't. Amen? God ain't bound by your reason. He's not sitting up there trying to make a way for you to reasonably explain Him. He's God. He don't have to be explained. He just asks that we believe. Amen? That we believe. When you get a chance, read 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, or better yet, we'll pick this up next week. Hallelujah. God has chosen the foolish things of the yes. world Amen. to confound the wise. Right. He has chosen. He has chosen that you not be able to understand with your carnal mind. Right. That's His way, Brother Sleeze. He made it to where you can't understand it. Amen. <laughs> Why? So that you'd have faith in Him. Because the law of faith is what works in the spiritual realm. Yes. Only believe. Only believe. Then the iron will swim for yes. you. Amen. Amen. Somebody else this morning. Have something.